and we don't think it's funny when he puts a costume on like this and goes out and confronts a mother of two children. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're exploring infamous times social media influencers dabbled in crime. For this video, we'll only be examining nonviolent crimes. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Thank you, higher power, for watching over me. Jack Allen. Yo, what's up guys? It is the Masked Gang Man. Armed with multiple Instagram accounts and a YouTube channel called The Masked Gang Man, Jack Allen used his clout to shill knockoff merchandise to his audience. Hidden beneath a mask to hide his identity, he promoted fake Omega watches, Beats, and Versace, among other luxury goods. What is up guys? It is the Masked Gang Man, and today we are reviewing the Beats by Dre. Allen managed to make some $18,000 from his home in Castleford, England before the cops came for the counterfeit merchant in 2021. In 2022, Allen pleaded guilty to two charges. He was sentenced to 16 weeks in jail, which was suspended for 12 months. Allen also had to undertake 150 hours of unpaid work and was given a sure charge of about $150. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you later. Bakaru Bronze Agaro. In 2023, England's Bakaru Bronze Agaro, better known as Mizzy, drew the ire of the public with stunts such as walking into a stranger's house, stealing a woman's dog, and entering a train cab. You get your kicks out of doing that? Not necessarily, but you can say that this whole public outroar just makes me laugh. Due to sharing videos of people online without their consent, the practical joker was taken in front of a judge and was banned from interacting on social media. Yo, son! However, shortly after, he broke this rule and was arrested. Ogaro was found guilty of two counts of breaching a criminal behavior order and was sentenced to 18 weeks in a young offender's institution. Upon his release six weeks later, Ogaro apologized for his behavior. Though I don't need to come up with no sincere apology. I already okay. have my own remorse. Casey Oliveira. Not many influencers have a dedicated Instagram account calling out their scams, but Casey Oliveira, also called Dana Chanel, is an exception. She's known as a Christian influencer who promotes exercise and natural cures. I'm not aware of or don't have contact with your family and with your situation. On top of this, Oliveira also ran Alakazam Apps, a mobile app creation group and credit repair company, Credit Exterminators. However, several customers who used her services weren't given what they were promised. But well, she's now being sued for not delivering on what she was promising in those posts. This even included a nonprofit organization that lost thousands of dollars. After attempting to get a refund and getting nowhere, they took Oliviera to court for fraud. Oliviera and her companies were ordered to pay the robbed customers $87,269.91, $31,000 in legal fees, and $6,000 in civil penalties. Well, she now has to pay more than $87,000 to dozens of clients. Douglas Mackey. In 2016, a group of far-right Donald Trump supporters attempted to use the internet to convince people to vote for him in the U.S. presidential election. Douglas Mackey was one such supporter. He created several social media accounts under the Ricky Vaughn name and pushed agendas against Hillary Clinton. This led to Mackey creating official election-looking memes claiming that people could text their vote to Clinton, which wasn't true. They say at least 40, uh, 4,900 people texted this number. Now, Mackey and the Trumps uh, have sort of claimed this is a joke. Around 4,900 people used the false service. In 2021, Mackey was arrested for voter suppression. The arrest represents what could be a big change in how the federal government fights election interference. In 2023, he was found guilty of conspiracy against rights and was sentenced to seven months in jail. Mackey's supporters have falsely claimed he was in prison due to sharing anti-Clinton memes. They're putting Douglas McKay in jail for sharing a joking meme about Hillary Clinton seven years ago. Danish Sahadavan, also known as Danny Devon, Danish Sahadavan from Rockville, Maryland, ran a TikTok that exports stocks and cryptocurrency, giving tips to his audience. However, in 2020, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act was issued to financially support folks during the pandemic. While many used the service to stay afloat, Sahadavan saw it as an opportunity to make himself rich. He fabricated forms to score himself a total of over $1.2 million in loans. Prosecutors say he then laundered the funds by engaging in several monetary transaction. Zahadaban then laundered the cash through trading and purchasing cryptocurrency. In 2023, the scammer pleaded guilty to several charges, including wire fraud and identity theft. Zahadaban was sentenced to three years in jail, followed by three years of supervision, and had to return $429,906. Faces decades in federal prison. Tim Giannette. 
Before 2016, Tim Giannette, also known as Baked Alaska, worked as a comedy rapper and briefly at BuzzFeed. But after leaving the firm, his far-right views quickly escalated as he vocally supported Donald Trump. Giannette became a prominent face of the conspiracy movement online, often touting racist and anti-Semitic views to his audience, causing him to get banned from several platforms and face legal issues. In 2021, Giannette livestreamed his involvement in the attack on the U.S. Capitol. Yeah, we need to get our boy Donald J. Trump into office. This backfired badly, as the FBI reportedly used his video to identify those involved. In 2022, Giannette pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor count of parading, demonstrating, or picketing inside a Capitol building. In 2023, he was sentenced to 60 days in jail. There's really no dispute that Baked Alaska is at the Capitol being sort of ridiculous for him to uh, claim so. Trevor Jacob. In 2021, snowboard athlete and YouTuber Trevor Jacob was flying his plane in California when the engine apparently stopped. Seeing no option, he jumped from the aircraft with a parachute, leaving the plane to crash. Thankfully, no one was hurt. I'm just so happy to be alive. I'm just kind of taking in what just happened. But when Jacob uploaded the video to his channel and it went viral, the aviation community noted some concerns with Jacob's explanation. To them, it looked like he did this as a publicity stunt. Oh my gosh, dude. I have no idea where I am. After an investigation by the Federal Aviation Administration, they concluded Jacob purposely crashed his plane and removed the wreckage to hide evidence. In 2023, he pleaded guilty to obstructing an investigation and admitted the stunt was a paid promotion. Jacob was sentenced to six months imprisonment. A pilot who deliberately crashed his plane in Santa Barbara County and posted it on YouTube has been sentenced to six months in federal prison. Charles Ross. Under the YouTube channels Ross Creations and Vlog Creations, Charles Ross became infamous for his practical joke videos. Oh, my heart! <laughs> Call an ambulance! <laughs> Over the years, he's pushed his content too far, causing him to run afoul of the law. In 2013, Ross was charged with battery after giving strangers wedgies and handed six months of prohibition, which was ended after three months. It sounds funny. But it's not once you're the one being given the wedgie. In 2019, he went too far again in Sarasota, Florida. Ross pretended to be a police officer as he tried to give a woman a parking ticket. When she called him out on his impersonation, Ross reportedly got angry before attempting to offer her concert tickets. As part of a plea deal, Ross was sentenced to six months of probation. These are immature actions by an adult who should know better. Ramona Boss. Rising to fame on Instagram with his extravagant lifestyle, Ramona Boss, better known as Hush Puppy, sparked envy with his posts from private jets, meeting celebrities, and being decked out in designer brands. He really kind of put it in everybody's face like, hey, look at me. The Nigerian influencer seemingly had all the cash in the world from being a real estate developer. Yet, as it turned out, that wasn't how a boss made his fortune. In reality, he was using fraud, money laundering, and scams to acquire his millions. His targets allegedly included a US law firm, a foreign bank, and an English Premier League club. In 2020, a boss was raided at his property in Dubai, UAE, and was arrested. In 2022, after being extradited to the US and pleading guilty to his crimes, a boss was sentenced to 11 years in jail in order to pay $1.7 million in restitution to two victims. I think even though we believe Mr. Abbas is a major player in this, He's only a bit player in the entire infrastructure of the complete organization. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Danielle Miller. On the surface, Danielle Miller seemingly had it all. Through her social media accounts, she posted images of her lavish lifestyle, showcasing pricey cars, designer goods, and high-end trips to her thousands of followers. But Miller didn't get her fortune from her successful lawyer father. Instead, she took advantage of various COVID-19 relief funds. Miller stole the identities of more than 10 people and created fake businesses to acquire around $1.5 million from the government. Danielle Miller pleading guilty to a $1.5 million fraud scheme accused of stealing the identities of more than 10 people across the country to obtain COVID-19 relief money. She then used the cash to fund private jets and rent luxury apartments. In 2023, after the self-confessed con artist pleaded guilty to several counts, Miller was sentenced to five years in jail in order to return the luxury goods she had fraudulently bought. Every penny that was went to a fraudster from the unemployment insurance program didn't go to someone who was unemployed. And that's the, that's a real tragedy out of this. Which influencer's nonviolent crime did we miss? The Madhu Adams smuggling case? Katie Sigmund hitting golf balls into the Grand Canyon? Or something else? Let us know below. The idea was just to like 
give strangers wedgies. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.